if it were not for him, I would definitely not apply to the UK. I would not have such a, um, a slightest idea that this is possible for me. Um, so undoubtedly, he was the person that influenced my journey so much. And I would not end up where I am today if it were not for him. So I'm immensely grateful. Welcome to Frank Stajano Explains. Today's topic is doing computer science at a great university is an incredible experience and you should consider it too, regardless of any preconceived notions you might have of who is fit for it and who isn't. We speak with one of my undergraduate students who, besides already doing some pretty interesting computer science work herself, has also engaged extensively in outreach activities to encourage and help out younger students. If you find this video inspiring, give it a like. I really appreciate it and it helps the channel a lot. If you want more like this one, subscribe. And if you have any questions, ask us in the comments. Have fun. Welcome everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce Martha, who interestingly is doing her second year of computer science, but I've uh, never met before because of COVID and I've been lecturing through uh, recording and so on. So. I, um, Actually, what am I saying? Uh, I should have met you. I, I should have had a chance of meeting you in the first year because I was still lecturing uh, in algorithms. person in the first year. Is this right? Algorithms. That's right. My algorithms lectures in person? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Maybe you never asked me a question at the end because I don't recall seeing you. Uh, for, that's the first time I consciously see you and meet you and, and I'm very happy to do so. So hello, Martha. Hello. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. So. Um, I invited you uh, because uh, your husband, who is one of my students at Trinity, uh, mentioned that uh, you're very active in women at CL. So can you tell us something about yourself, uh, who you are, what fires you up? And then after that, uh, what is this women at CL? <laughs> okay, so I come from Poland originally. Right now I've finished my second year uh, of computer science undergrad at Queen's College. Um, and well, my interests apart from academics are various sports, windsurfing, volleyball. And I also enjoy organizing stuff a lot, um, planning events, for example, my work at Women at CL was also connected with organizing. Um, so Women at CL, the shortcut comes from Women at Computer Lab. That's a society in Cambridge of all the women in our department. Um, so it's a group where we kind of want to support each other. And this year I was also on the committee of women at CL acting as a co-chair of the Women in Computer Science Conference, um, which is organized every other year, uh, either in Cambridge or in Oxford. It's, it's called an Oxbridge Conference. Um, so the year I was organizing that, it was supposed to be in Cambridge. So obviously we could not make it happen in person. Uh, so that was made online and it was an incredible experience working with working with many talented people to get it all done online, like incredibly challenging. All of us did this for, for the first time, um, but I think it played out well. And well, I'm really happy for the event, for taking part in it. I think it's really influential for, for some girls. Um, it was also open to people outside of Oxbridge, so students from other universities or I guess even high school students could attend it if they wanted. Um, so I guess you can really get inspired on such events. We had academic speakers and speakers from the industry. The speakers were all female. Um, so we heard some really motivating stories about how their life evolved and how it was connected to computer science in general. What's the most inspiring thing you got at this year's conference? You personally? Oh, for me personally, um, there was an academic, a professor from Cambridge speaking, and she told us about her personal journey, uh, how she ended up doing computer science, uh, what kind of difficulties she faced when she was very young, and and yeah, her life seemed her life seemed very difficult to me as in comparison to mine where everything played out quite nicely i would say in my life and she had so many difficulties so i really fought after that that speech 
um, that there are so many more difficulties I can overcome um, as, as she did. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. Well, um, maybe I'll ask you: How can you? Uh, how did you get into computers in the first place? Uh, how old were you when you first uh, started coding and so on? Uh, so the first time, the first idea that computer science exists uh, came from my old, older brother, um, who was studying computer science when I was like five years old. He's older than me, <laughs> uh, but I was definitely too young to glance over at his lecture notes and see what he's learning. I was not um, that of motivated child at that age, definitely. Um, the first time I wrote some code was in my secondary school, then I was 14, perhaps. Um, there was a, like a project organized for our school, but it was by, led by a different school. My, my school did not have much of computer science education, I would say. Um, so I first learned the, there are some C++, some basic C++, see out hello world. Um, and I'm actually still in love with that language. So my internship this summer is gonna be in C++, but, but since then, that's time my knowledge has probably evolved a lot. <laughs> Where are you doing your internship? It's going to be in London in a trading company. Trading company. Yes, that's true. But my job is going to be more on embedded systems, the interconnection between hardware and software. Um, I'm not going to be trading. I'm just going to be a software engineer there. And I'm really excited about the technology they're creating. Excellent. Um... And you mentioned you started on C++. C++ is usually you know, hardcore software engineer kind of stuff. But uh, if you listen to the creator of C++, who, by the way, got his PhD in Cambridge, um, uh, Bjarne Strusrup says you could use C++ to teach uh, computer science in a principled way because you have so many powerful abstractions in C++. However, what we then observe is that the way C++ is used uh, to teach is from people, I mean, the teachers themselves usually come from having learned C and now C++ is more fashionable. So they just use C++ to teach, but they're basically teaching C. So which one of these did you get? I, I got C++ definitely. The first time I had some connection with C was on a previous internship, but it was like very, very short. And then this year I had a course on mostly C and then a bit of C++. So that was when I really wrote code in C. <laughs> Right, so the, the C++ you grew up with uh, was, you know, proper classes, abstractions, and so on, not the pointers and low-level garbage. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's very impressive. Okay, excellent. Uh, and that's still the language you prefer, as you said. Yeah, um, yeah, that's true. It's, it's my favorite for now. <laughs> but yeah. perhaps I'll meet a language which is better for me. <laughs> right, so, so you, you started coding in C++ uh, at around 14. And at which stage did you realize that this was really exciting for you and you wanted to continue and even going to university doing uh, computer science? Mm -hmm. So after, like in my secondary school, I just did this course basically and there was nothing more to it, I would say, like perhaps just very little uh, of programming. But then I became kind of more keen on doing that in my high school. Um, it's difficult to pick one point when I became passionate about this. I felt I was good at maths, but I was not really convinced what to do with it. Um, so when I went to high school, I met lots of motivating people and this kind of sparked this dream of studying in Oxbridge for me, um, not even Cambridge, I was considering both. Um, and I just remember looking over the course pages uh, of, of engineering, of maths with computer science, of computer science with business um, in, in the whole UK. So I was not really convinced back then what to do. Um, but then um, I decided like computer science is the most likely cho choice for me. Uh, and I was thinking, what can I do to get into Cambridge, to get into Oxbridge in general? Um, I wanted to work somewhere over the summer and I decided I'm going to apply for student internships in my city, uh, which was very uncommon because it was after my second year of high school. 
So everyone was looking at me as if I was mad, uh, wanting to get a job over the summer at a software company. And How old were you at this time? At the time? I was 17. 17. I wasn't even 18. <laughs> Were you even legally allowed to? Yeah, that, that was the problem. So many companies like looked at me, you're not even allowed to work. <laughs> but I was actually turning 18 during the internship. Um, so one company did hire me and I was so grateful to them for them. Like I felt even bad about them paying me. That the money was very small, but I was so surprised that they hired me uh, with so zero experience, basically. Um, that was very challenging for sure. It's um, what, definitely what took, that job? So it was a two month internship and the first month of it was basically training, um, some training in C++, but even the training in C++, I was so terribly behind the university students who already had classes at university on it. Um, there was some Python, which I knew nothing at the time. Um, some virtualization stuff and also like Kubernetes or Docker courses. So we had a full month of courses like this. Um, and this put me out of my comfort zone, I'd say a lot because I knew nothing on it. And I had to ask the students around me lots of stupid questions and ask my mentors lots of stupid questions as well. Um, but everyone was kind of happy with how I was doing. Like they were super helpful and I learned, learned definitely so much. Um, and the second year, the second month of this internship was working on a project. So we were able to choose a project and I cho chose a, a project, a bit of an automotive stuff. Uh, we were creating a car cluster simulator um, using an Arduino board. So also a piece of hardware. We had like the car cluster on my desk and uh, we were trying to figure out with what should be the messages, the protocol to, to connect to it, to send proper messages for it to react. So by react, I mean like the speed arrow is going up or down or the lights are turning on and off. And so we learned how to control that. And I was very inspired by that. Um, I think it, it also had huge impact for my choice of computer science later on. So like the internship itself, um, made me strengthen my belief that computers is what I would like to engage with in the future. Um, I definitely recommend that to everyone, but it's also um, not a comfortable experience <laughs> to get a work on something you don't know. That's very, very cool. Huh? You, you, you've been very uh, enterprising and proactive in, in seeking this out, even when it was barely allowed for you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and my 18th birthday in the company was amazing. The company was um, so excited that someone is turning 18 uh, while working for them. So the whole day was of partying and we did no work at all. <laughs> Are you keeping in touch with them? Excuse me? Are you keeping in touch with this company? Yeah, yeah, a bit. Um, with the company, more with the students who work along me, but yeah. So talking about the students and, and maybe the other people you've met in this journey, is there anybody who's been especially inspirational for you uh, in, in general and, and especially with respect to you becoming uh, passionate about computing? Uh -huh. um, so when it comes to becoming passionate about computing itself, I would definitely say that my Scrum manager on in that internship was very motivating and uh, helped me a lot to, to decide on computer science. But there's actually one more person who was incredibly inspirational for me. Uh, though he's not a computer scientist at all, that was my English teacher at high school. Um, so I went to one of the best high schools in Poland and I was super terrified of going into that school at, at the beginning. Um, I got into the best English group at school where I met him, he was the teacher there. And after two weeks or so, he decided that I should go one level down. Uh, and I was very frustrated. Uh, I loved lessons with him and not in the second group, let's say. Um, so after half a year of my questions and begging him to take me back, he did take me back to his group. Um, and I was super motivated to work towards 
towards being in his group. That was the first thing. Uh, but he was an extremely good teacher um, of life, I would say, not just English. He was providing us with lots of guidance of stories of successful students who, who, who he teached previously, um, who went on to study in the UK or in the States. He was giving us lots of books, whatever you would actually need to apply. And uh, he knew the process of applying to the UK perfectly. If it were not for him, I would definitely not apply to the UK. I would not have such a, um, a slightest idea that this is possible for me. Um, so undoubtedly, he was the person that influenced my journey so much. And I would not end up where I am today if it were not for him. So I'm immensely grateful for, for that. I'm going to be forever. <laughs> That's a very, very inspirational, as you say. And, and why, why was he not keen on having you uh, initially? Is it because your, your English fluency was insufficient? Uh, yeah, my English level was just not good enough, I would say. I was coming from a different school. So my high school was uh, connected with a secondary school. So some people just uh, continued from the secondary school to the high school. And he had a group in, in secondary school, which was already on a higher level than I was. So most of this new group were, were students from that, his previous group. Um, and my level of English was good. Um, but he was preparing us to a C level C2 certificate, that's Cambridge proficiency exam. And I was not good enough for that at the time that made it back. <laughs> how, how did you deal with the, having to reach the level that he expected? Um, you very I, hard on your own? Um, I would not say I was working very hard. For sure, I was one of the best people in the second group that I got pulls down to. Um, but I started reading books a lot. It was something he was encouraging us to do. Um, and previously before that, I was not reading books at all. Uh, even my Polish, like compulsory um, books I had to learn for, uh, sorry, to read for the Polish lessons, I was not reading that. Um, and then I started reading books in English, which turned out to improve my English a lot. Um, and I think he also saw that I'm motivated enough. I'm like reading the books, borrowing books. Um, it was something he was extremely keen on that people should read books to learn the language. Um, and I definitely agree with that. That's a great way. You can read something you're interested in, uh, but you're le learning the language at the same time. It's such a life lesson, as you say, and, and we could draw parallels between this in English and, and something else to do, for example, with, with computer science. I mean, I can imagine someone else of the age you were at the time uh, who is excited about computing, but some wise and inspired teacher who could be you for the sake of argument, uh, you're a better teacher. Uh, and you say, well, you know, kid, uh, you you seem to like it, but you're just not at the level I need yet. So go back to the second group. And this kid is super, super keen and so they would want to go back to your group because you're such a an inspiring figure and so on and so on so what would that kid need to do in order to get back to be accepted into your group for computer science for computer science wow, like, that's... like you you write your own books and all that stuff uh, i mean if you, if you see the parallel i'm trying to make uh, uh -huh. if you were the teacher what would be your advice for that, that young students who wants to get back into the advanced class well, it depends on what kind of class it is, but I assume it's some kind of C++ class in high school. Uh, let's say so. I would definitely recommend to that student to do lots of exercises. Like you cannot learn coding, if that's a coding class, obviously. You cannot learn coding without coding yourself. Um, and if it's, uh, I don't know, foundations of computer science class or something regarding to computer architecture, then reading a book would be also a good idea. Um, but reading it mindfully, so like taking notes and actually understanding. Um, and if that student, for example, came to me and asked a question, like I'm reading this book, uh, could you explain this chapter to me? Because I have no clue what's going on. 
um, like the, the student may feel that he's showing his weaknesses, but I would be super impressed that he actually went on to read a book on the topic. Um, and yeah, just kind of, even if he doesn't understand it, it shows that the person is motivated and can get there to understanding it for sure. Hmm. So I, I kind of cast you in that role of the teacher in this question because uh, of some other things, some other initiatives, uh, outreach initiatives you've been involved in. Uh, I understand you've uh, worked on something called Meet IT. Can you tell us more about that? You've been mentoring younger people already. Yeah, that's true. Um, actually, I have not been mentoring them. My husband has been a lot. He is one of the co-founders of this foundation. Um, I was involved with Meet AT more on the organizing bit. Um, but yeah, let's start with what Meet AT is about at all. Sorry um, if I mis misrepresented that. No, no, it, it's, it's OK. Um, the, the first idea of MITT was basically to mentor people, that for sure. Um, but we moved on to organizing, for example, computer science camps. Uh, we had one camp back in 2019 and 2022 before coronavirus struck. Um, is in the future, I think. Yes, and one is being organized um, this summer in Poland. Uh, which I'm not organizing because I'm going to be working on, on my summer internship. Um, but the, the mission, the idea behind Meet IT is to make uh, education accessible to everyone, regardless of what kind of background they come from. And, and we wanted to make this, the, the learning very creative and personalized for everyone. Um, so even people from lower performing schools, let's say, can reach out to us and, and be, uh, be guided by us. We also had lots of students from Cambridge, Cambridge and Oxford who could guide the application process to Oxbridge. Uh, right now, fewer people are applying due to the higher fees, but, um, but we also kind of had that influence in that way. Um, the motivation for founding MITAT, I was not a founding me member of it. I joined later on, uh, but the motivation was that students at schools in po Poland felt unsupported when it came to computer science, uh, when they wanted to learn programming. Lots of schools did not have computer science programming education at all. Um, and a couple of years ago, uh, in fact, majority of participants in Polish computer science co competitions were coming from few biggest cities. And that was like three cities or so, um, very little. And Meet ITE, started with a mentoring scheme, um, which really showed how this proportion was changed. I can't remember the statistics now, but like um, a big percent of the finalists of the competition was a uh, Meet IT mentee. Uh, and we were very happy with that. So that motivated us to organize the camps. Um, and that was how I came into, into Meet IT. I was co-organizing one of the camps, the first one, which gathered um, 60 participants from 13 different countries. Uh, and that was, yeah, that was something really different for me. Like we had 13 countries on a camp that some high school students decided to organize, let's say, because uh, yeah, they were already in university, but the foundation was founded when they were in high school. Um, and then we organized a few months later, another camp, which I was the main camp manager of it. Um, so I was organizing everything, planning stuff. Like I said, I like planning stuff, um, acting as a manager. But my husband, Casper, was one of the tutors there, uh, teaching programming. And m most of the programming was in C++. Um, some of it, it was in Python, but yeah, in general, C++ was kind of aimed at the Computer Science Olympiad in Poland, uh, which is a important competition for all programmers in Poland. Um, I think in the UK, it's not that common to be participating in scientific Olympiads. Um, but yeah, the camp put my managing skills to a huge test, and I really, really enjoyed organizing that and helping those young students to find their way. Uh, to are we talking young students? What age? 
they were in high school. Um, so not, not that very young, but all of them were in high school preparing for the high school competition, which is so the so Olympiad. What age range? Excuse me? What age range? What's the youngest and the oldest of, of the attendees of this camp? Um, actually, on the first camp, we had the youngest person being age 15. He came from Bangladesh on his own. Uh, and the oldest ones were like 18. I think 18 or 19. The, were you reaching out to schools and say, we offer this, please send the students or were they finding you in some way? And if so, how? Um, so the outreach happened mostly online, um, mostly through the competition society, let's say in Poland. We were also cooperating with a mathematical camp that was happening annually and they already had like a tradition of this camp. Uh, so they helped us a lot with advertising that and getting funds for, for the first camp. So we gathered lots of international students uh, for them as well. Um, and yeah, I guess that the members of MITD simply had lots of friends abroad um, due to international competitions they went to. So asking every one of the competitors to like share the news in their schools. And that was basically enough. We did not approach teachers in the schools, mostly just from the students going from the lower so level. That you even had a 15 year old from Bangladesh who came. Uh, so this means if people are watching you on this video and they see oh, what, what she does is really exciting. Can I apply to the next one? Can anybody apply? That's true. It's completely true. Like this year due to coronavirus restrictions, it may be not possible. <laughs> But our mission was to like, start in Poland and grow beyond Poland. Actually, in 2020, we were supposed to organize camps in Spain, Romania, and, and some more countries, Ukraine and Poland. Uh, we wanted to organize four camps, uh, but everything went down. But, but uh, if someone, someone is 14 or 15 now and wants to get into this, and assuming that 2022, uh, the coronavirus is not as bad as it's been the past couple of years. Uh, can they go to one of these camps, even if they're not from one of these countries where you're actually running it? Yeah, we we are completely open to all nationalities and to invite everyone. Um, and even regardless of the level at the camp I was organizing, we had a group of advanced um, advanced students, let's say, and. It's turned out that some people who came to the camp have basically no experience with coding at all. And we were very surprised to, to learn that. Um, but we managed to create a basic group, which started from the very, very beginning of programming in C++ and Python. Um, and yeah, kind of acted on the spot there, but, but we want to make it available to everyone. And also the camp we are organizing this summer is unfortunately paid. Uh, but we have lots of financial aid schemes. So if someone do thinks they don't afford the camp, uh, they can apply for the financial aid. Um, and the scheme there is also, if the student prepares, for example, um, a computer science problem, so a task which will be solved during one of the contests, then we will take the price. The, the price for him is much lower because he's kind of contributing to the camp to, to organize it. Excellent, excellent. It's very, very exciting. I and mean, congratulations for taking <laughs> this initiative. I mean, people usually give back after they've, you know, they've had their own career. I mean, you, you started doing this very young, so well done. Uh, uh, I'm admiring this. Now, if I switch uh, gears a, a little bit, also I'm trying to keep an eye on time. Um, you mentioned you, you worked on Arduinos in this internship. You're doing embedded systems in your current uh, internship this year. And uh, what is your own area of interest in computer science? What, what's most exciting for you? I think I'm still finding what's most interesting for me. Um, right now, I was looking um, for my final year programming project, uh, dissertation project. And it's going to be by, it's going to be around computer architecture, and I find this field very exciting. Um, and yeah, like like I've mentioned previously, the automotive industry is very um, 
very interesting for me as well. I guess that's also some influence of my brothers, older brothers. When I was young, there were lots of cars around the home and motorcycles that they were repairing. Um, so yeah, either automotive or computer architecture, that's the fields I would see myself right now in. Hmm. That sounds exciting and diverse. Very interesting. Um, now, um, as you must be aware with your involvement with outreach and so on, women at CL and so on, this is a field that is still uh, largely male dominated. How did this affect you? And did, did you did you have to face prejudice, maybe bullying or something like that? Um, I think I was fortunate enough to experience quite the opposite of it. Um, I was never bullied because of being a woman in computer science. Um, I found that boys at my school were always very helpful to me um, and to the girls trying their strength at computing at all. Um, well, definitely my high school was not a typical high school. We had some computer science camps organized as well, like a few days of coding in a different place at school. Um, I remember I have a photograph from one of these camps where I'm sitting at my at the desk with my laptop on it and there's like six or five boys around me um, all staring at the screen of my computer laptop and trying to find what's the bug there in, in my code and I remember this that was super weird <laughs> but someone took a picture of it everyone was trying to help me um, so I think it even made it made my journey easier I was always encouraged by that Though it, it was hard at times, like if you try to compare yourself to everyone who's already better than you, um, if you're starting the journey and there are lots of men, especially who are advanced in the topic and they're, I feel like men are often, bra where, at least in my experience, where often bragging about their, um, their achievements already. Um, but I tried not to feel discouraged by that and like not to compare myself to their achievements because I was just starting. Um, yeah, but I think I think in general people are kind of becoming more understand, understanding towards women in computer science um, and welcoming for sure. Now, one thing you mentioned, you know, many people were more advanced and so on. That this is not limited to um, one being a woman and finding that there are men who are more advanced. Whatever your gender, whatever your background, whatever, whoever you are, um, I mean, I would find, you know, I go into a place of high flyers and everybody seems to be much smarter than me and more advanced than me and knows more things than me and so on and so on. And so in the context of this being a video of someone who is doing computer science at Cambridge and may inspire other people to go to Cambridge, you say, well, Everybody says I'm good, thinks the teenager, but Cambridge is full of people with, you know, galactic credentials and Nobel prizes and so on. And, and everybody will have started programming when they were three. And so I'm going to feel out of place. What would you say to those people? Mm -hmm. um, I think the problem is also when you are already are in Cambridge, but to those who are applying and feel afraid of that, um, I think it's, it should be even a motivating thing for them to, like, you should not be afraid. You should just spend this time that you're being afraid on preparing for university and preparing for your application. Um, university is there to teach you computer science. So it does not really matter that everyone else had some experience in this or that programming language. If you did not have experience in programming language, then it's also fine for you. Um, if you're if you're just passionate about computers, like you don't need to know a programming language to get into computer science at Cambridge. Um, you just need to have this sense of logical thinking about how computers work and be motivated to learn that stuff. Um, and be sure that this is interesting for you, because if it's not interesting for you, then um, then you're going to be wasting three years of your time. Um, so I guess like prior experience with coding makes you sure that you're either into computer science or you're not. Um, but it should not be a requirement and no one should be afraid of that. 
because you will learn lots of stuff for your degree. Um, you don't need to know that when you're coming here. But, but when it comes to people already who are already in, in Cambridge and feel disadvantaged somehow, um, I think it's I think it's very difficult the imposter syndrome, um, but I would also say that it's it's the best way to get to deal with it is when you stop thinking about what others are achieving, but you just congratulate them and move on, and realize that it's better to compare yourself to who you were yesterday. I love this quote from someone I don't remember who whose it is that you should be comparing yourself to the person you were yesterday. Um, and then you will notice that the small improvements you're making every day are just getting you there. And you don't need to be a co concerned with what other people, other people think about you, uh, what other people are like themselves. Uh, you should just need to think about yourself and what you would like to achieve. I've, yeah. <laughs> well, great life advice. <laughs> Well done. So uh, I think that's a, a great note on which to finish, unless you have any final advice that you want to share. Um, any final advice? Like, I would say, don't be afraid of applying to Cambridge. Cambridge is full of excellent academic staff, of experienced people, um, and to, they are all very, uh, very keen on helping everyone. I've experienced that recently when I was looking for my parts to project supervisor. Like it's so easy to find an expert in the field you are interested in. Um, and yeah, people are incredibly supportive. My director of studies has made the place I'm living in feel like home. Um, very supportive of everything. So even if you get into Cambridge and then you feel like this place is not for me, you still will have people who will help you. Um, and just don't be afraid to ask them questions. Just don't be afraid to talk about what's happening in your life. Um, yeah, even stupid questions are welcome always. 